Welcome to the Chlorine King Podcast, where your host, Eric Taylor, will discuss tips for the do-it-yourselfer, answer listeners' questions, conduct product reviews, and host special guests from the pool industry. Grab your swimsuits and let's dive in. Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode of the Chlorine King Podcast. I really appreciate y'all for tuning in as always. We have a great episode in store for you. And I'm sure you guys have all heard about pool turnover at some point, but what exactly is it? So we'll go ahead and talk about that and so much more. But before we answer a listener's question, let's take a moment to mention our official sponsors that make this episode possible. The show is brought to you by Aquasuite, the app to supercharge your pool business by keeping you organized and saving you time. Go to useaquasuite.com to learn more and be sure to tell them that Chlorine King sent you for a free 30-day trial. And also, Riptide Pool Vacuum Systems, the simplest way to save time cleaning your pools. With unparalleled performance and support, get your Riptide today at riptidevac.com. Ann emailed us with a question earlier this week and she asks, Eric, it seems like I'm always having to clean my filter more frequently than my friends tell me that they do. What gives? Well, Ann, there's a few things that we can look at. Without knowing the specifics of your pool, I really can only speak in generalities and give you some things to look out for. The first is the size of your filter and if it's correct and correctly sized for your pool. If it's too small, then it's not going to be able to handle all the water in your pool and it makes your filter extremely dirty very quickly. And because of that, in order to keep the circulation run smoothly, you're going to have to clean it more frequently than one of your friends who has their equipment sized properly for their pool. The second is the surrounding area of your pool. Is their pool cage and yours isn't? That's going to play a huge part too because your pool will always see more debris and dirt than their pool simply won't have to deal with. And it's going to be safe to say that a caged pool will cause less strain on the filter than a pool that's uncaged, so you can take that in consideration as well. What about use? Are you swimming in your pool more frequently than your friends are in theirs? To piggyback off what I was just saying about being caged or uncaged, the more you swim, the more the filter is going to catch with all things equal. Lastly, how old is the element in your filter? As things get older, regardless of how clean you keep them, they eventually lose their ability to filter as well and gets dirty a lot quicker. You can watch the starting pressure of the filter generally increase over time because it's getting worn out. If you have a sand filter, I'd consider changing the sand out every five years to keep it running in tip-top shape. If you have a DE filter, the grids can probably last five to seven years given that the pool is properly cared for, and I like to clean or replace the cartridges once per year to keep up their performance. So I really hope this answers your questions, Ann. If you have any more help, please don't hesitate to reach back out to me. Now today we're going to talk about pool turnover and how it affects our pools. So, by definition, what is pool turnover? It simply means taking the gallons of your pool and making sure you run the equipment long enough to cycle that amount of water through the system. For example, if you got to have a 20,000 gallon pool, all you need to do is run the system long enough to run 20,000 gallons of water through your system. Doing this means you turn the pool over one time. It's not as simple as that though. Most people think that all they need to do is do one turnover and their pool's good. And that's simply not the case. Why do you ask? Let's take our gallonage referenced above. Just because we cycle 20,000 gallons of water through the system, does that mean we put all the water through the filter? Absolutely not. You'd be wrong if you thought so. One turnover does not achieve this, and in fact, you need a lot more turnovers in order to filter every molecule of water that's in your pool. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I do believe that four turnovers per day will pull about 98% of the water that's in your pool through the filter system, just as an example. Is that needed? Not at all. In regards to residential pools, there's not a turnover requirement like there is with commercial pools. And because of this, most homeowners choose to save money and shoot for 1.5 to 2 turnovers per day. That will put most of your pool water through the filter. But how long does that take though? The easiest way is to get a variable speed pump. I really like the Pentair and Teleflow VSF because it has a flow rate programmed into the pump as it runs. Then you can take the flow rates from each schedule you're programming, add up the total gallon per minute that it does for each schedule based off the runtime, then all, add all those schedules together and divide them by the total gallonage of the pool. That will give you a turnover you can expect to see each day. 
and then adjust as necessary. Now again, to use our 20,000 gallon example above, in order to turn it over one and a half times per day, we need to pull about 30,000 gallons of water through that to make it happen, or 40,000 gallons if you're trying to turn the pool over twice. So what if you don't have a pump that's capable of doing that, or you just have a single speed pump? The simplest way then is to have a flow meter installed by your pool, local pool professional. It's an analog style meter that will increase as, the water, as more water flows through it. So all you have to do is do the math to see where you stand. So say your, your flow meter is telling you you're pulling 55 gallons per minute at a steady pace from the time the pump is on to the time the pump is off. That means you can expect to have one turnover every six hours, you know, give or take, of course. See how easy that is? So what are some things that you can expect to happen if you don't achieve an ideal turnover rate? A lot of bad stuff. First, that means the pool isn't running long enough to spread the chemicals through the water to keep the pool healthy and safe to swim in. Also, a side effect of this means that your, the sun has a lot easier time burning the chemicals out of the pool. This not only means your pool may become unsafe to swim in, but it will also increase your chemical costs to keep it clear and healthy and, and all that good stuff. In conjunction to all that, this can give the ability for algae to grow in your pool. As I've mentioned in my earlier podcast, you can get algae one of three ways. The first is chemically, the second is circulation, and the last is a combination of the two. See where I'm going with this? Circulation would be the primary cause of algae in this situation because we aren't turning the pool over enough. The secondary issue is chemically because the chlorine is burning off quicker because it's not circulating around. Remember, the sheer action of the water moving around in your pool and circulating helps protect the chlorine because it's not sitting there waiting to be burned off by the sun. It makes the sun work a little harder to do so. So you can see why it's important to have the water moving. And I always suggest to my clients, if you're running the turnover rate towards the lower end of the scale, make sure to run the pump during the hottest time of the day to give the pool the best chance to stay clear and healthy. Now, what if you turn over your pool 10 times a day? Nothing really, except you can expect to have a serious electricity bill, but you will have the cleanest water in your neighborhood. So that's pool turnover in a nutshell. It's one of the most important things you can do to help your pool stay swimmable all year long. Without a correct turnover rate, you can expect to see things like increased chemical costs, a higher frequency of algae in your pool, and a shorter life expectancy of your pool equipment. All those are bad, so take the time to figure out your system's ability to turn over the pool water and shoot for at least one and a half times per day. We didn't touch much on the commercial side of things, and maybe that'll be a great topic for another podcast down the road. So stay tuned for our next episode to continue quenching your thirst for pool knowledge. Until next time, stay safe and enjoy your pool. That's all for tonight, and thanks for tuning in. Please send any comments or ideas, how-to and guest appearance requests, and product review suggestions to eric at chloreinekingpools.com. Remember, if life piddles in your pool of dreams, just add some chlorine and keep swimming. See you next time.